Hi, everybody. I am so thrilled and honored to be here. And I always love doing events in Canada because my grandparents were French Canadians. And so I feel like I have strong roots and especially when it comes to working with spirit guides because my my family my my grandparents and great grandparents are actually big and very influential guides in my own life so i feel like i'm coming home anyway it's really exciting to be with you and to talk to you tonight about really what in the entire body of my work is what I hold dearest in my heart, which is how to connect with your divine support system, how to connect with your, your angels and your guides and actually begin to experience your life in a very different way. You know, it's the difference between li living in your spirit and living with the connection to spirit is the difference between feeling like you're in the jungle all alone at night without a flashlight and terrified to having a guided tour in a beautiful Range Rover. I mean, it is, it is, there's no comparison. And I do not believe that any one of us should ever, ever go through life feeling alone and disconnected. Now, if we go back to our indigenous cultures and our religious roots, every spiritual tradition, every single one does at least acknowledge that we have angels. Not everyone acknowledges guides, but almost every of culture from every part of the world, every spiritual orientation does acknowledge that there is some continuity of spirit as well as acknowledges like in Asia, we acknowledge our ancestors and the indigenous cultures. We are, are absolutely talk to the ancestors and the great spirits and, and in even the um, many Western, like I grew up Catholic and we always talked to our angels and we were told we had angels and saints and, and our dearly departed and, and God and the universe. And so it's part of our inherent culture around the world, but somehow we just kind of drifted from having this connection to spirit. So tonight I'm hoping that, that we'll be able to make a reconnection so that it, that you can begin to feel more supported. So I first wrote Ask Your Guides uh, in 1996, I believe. So a lot has changed since then. A lot has changed. We are in a different world paradigm. We are in a brand new experience. And so I was guided by my spirit guides to rewrite the book for these times because they are so profound. You know, as of December 21st, around the solstice, the, uh, the, the energy of the planet re-entered a new era. It was, it, we have kind of stepped into a frequency that's very similar to the same conscious potential as when the Renaissance started. So it went from the dark ages to the most prolific creative period of all, of all time. And we're right at that same threshold. Only we're actually elevating as humans to be sixth sensory. We are, we are being boosted up and we are being helped by the universe to awaken our sixth sense and reintegrate it back into our lives because we need it. And this sixth sense, this inner consciousness, this heart knowing, which we've been talking about for some time in any spiritually conscious circle is starting to spontaneously open up in the greater majority of people and will continue. So how exciting is that? And I wonder if you've been feeling it, if you've been feeling just a little bit more intuitive, 
maybe just a little bit more conscious, a little bit more aware. Maybe you've been feeling just a little bit more connected or even wondering, you know, maybe I am being supported. So it's just something to check in with as we go into some of the things I want to share tonight. Now, the first thing about spirit guides is that you cannot connect with your angels or your spirit guides through your head, through your thinking brain, through the thinking ego part of you. Because it's just the wrong channel. Is imagine that your thinking brain, your talking head, if you will, is like an AM radio, okay? It's just broadcasting words. It's broadcasting and exchanging thoughts, but those thoughts are mostly from the past there are, or their anxieties about the future, but they're not really connected to the moment. Well, that part of you does not experience any kind of connection with spirit, okay? So we have to get into the right channel. And the, and the channel that connects to the spirit realm is your spirit. So we're gonna start there. We're gonna kind of wake up your spirit. And that's the part of you that gives you life. Here's how we're gonna do it. The very first thing I invite you to do with me is just take a look around. I know you're looking at me on a Zoom link, but just for a moment, let your eyes drift and look around the room. Just notice where you are, including just notice one or two physical things and really connect with that. Now there's a benefit to something as simple as this in that what it does is it gets you out of your head. It gets you out of your thinking, it gets you out of the past and the future, it gets you back in your body because when you connect with your spirit is in your heart space, in your body, in your gut space, maybe in the back of your head. But this from the, from the throat down to the hips, this is where we make the connection. So first you look around the room and that kind of brings you back to the body. And now what I invite you to do is take a slow, deep breath. Just don't rush, just slow like you're sipping air. And then I want you to exhale when you're full up like you're blowing out candles in a cake. Pull your belly to your spine, blowing out the candles. And with that, I want you to imagine that you're just emptying yourself of all the thinking, worry, anxiety you have in your brain that you're holding on to, or might be holding on to you. So let's do that again. Just breathe in. When you're empty, you wanna breathe in again even more deeply. This time, open your jaw and let out a deep sigh. Ah. And then smile. And notice what happens. You know, that deep sigh. Let's do that again. Breathe in. Open the jaw. Ah. And smile. It brings your consciousness in and it's like going down the slide and you land right in your heart space. And that does actually naturally cause you to smile because you're home. This is where we come in to our body, our heart. And this is our home, home base, not up here, here. Ah. And when you smile, I want you to pay attention to something. Listen to the, the sounds in your head. And what you'll notice generally is that after you take this deep breath and sigh and you come home, it's quiet. It's like instant meditation. It is an amazing experience. Ah. Now, from that place, you're just gonna feel different. I want you to notice the difference in energy and vibration and experience, however you can, you can think of it. But it's just like you're more grounded, you're here. The, the interesting irony about working with spirit guides and angels and connecting to the divine realm 
is that we don't get out of our body to do it. You actually have to get into your body to be successful. It's like you have to get grounded, like plugging in a light plug. You know, you have to get in there to be successful. If you're floating around, you're actually up in the treetops of your head. And that's the fight, flight, freeze, please consciousness that is really scattered and chaotic. When you take that nice deep breath, you come back to your spirit and it calms. It becomes coherent. It becomes harmonious. You feel peaceful. Even doing that and that frees your attention so that you can begin to feel the connection in the spirit realm. So that's exciting. So first we just do that. Just get in the habit of taking a couple deep breaths, maybe two to blow out candles and empty yourself. And the third, ah, you can come down the slide and enter your heart space then smile because when you smile, you pull the curtains of your heart open and that allows you to begin to become sensitive to spirit guide energy. So now the next thing I want you to do and invite you to do with me is we're gonna wake up that sensitivity. So I want you to rub your hands together like this. Don't hold your breath, just rub your hands together and shake them up, okay? And then I want you to do that again. I want you to rub them together. You're getting the energy flowing and shake it out. And at the third time, just rub it together as you breathe. And then I want you to very slowly pull your hands apart and you'll begin to feel the subtle energy that is emanating from palm to palm. You begin to feel it. And this, this awakening of awareness, often it's like, Whoa, what's that? It's, but it's subtle. So don't expect some big hot whoosh. And sometimes it's cool. But you're going to feel this different energy. And this is the energy of spirit. What you're feeling between your hands is your spirit. You can also put it by your face, your hands just on the sides of your face. And some people say, well, I'm feeling the heat off my body. But that heat is generated by your spirit. When your spirit is not in your body, the body is cold. It's cold and hard pretty fast. So this is the first introduction to just feel your spirit. Now, you know what else is fun? Is to take your hands and maybe go over your plants and feel their spirit. It's very different. Maybe your pets. Just put your hand and feel with your eyes closed and you Feel their spirit. And what we're doing is we're making you sensitive. We're awakening your sensitivity to more subtle vibration. You can also do this with someone in your home, with your child or a partner or a sibling. You just put your hand, first you rub, and then you place your palms toward the other. So they're like this. And you can feel the energy traveling. And as you back apart, you'll still feel the connection. You can back sometimes as far as 20, 30 feet and still feel the connection. So this is just the way to jumpstart you into becoming sensitive energetically to the spirit plane and not just thinking about it because that's not going to do it. We have to plug in. So that's the beginning. Now, the next thing is that we need to recognize that the stronger we recognize, we, we really recognize our own spirit, the more we're gonna connect naturally to the spirit realm. So the brain will consider is like AM talk radio and the spirit realm is like satellite. It's not FM, it's not internet, it's satellite. It is global, it is, it is expansive. And so one of the things that really helps you expand and get into this frequency and connect with this higher frequency is to just name a couple things you love. For example, I love where I am. I live in Paris. I love my home in Paris. I love this city. I love the French baguettes that I get here with the delicious cheese and apples. 
I love music. I love teaching. I love reading. I love writing. I love connecting with people and I love really solid, genuine hugs and, and not burps, which a lot of people give instead of a hug. I love laughing. I love my children. I love my friends. I love good food. See, just in that 30 seconds, that wasn't even a full minute. My heart chakra, my receptor to the spirit realm is wide open. So it's not going to be enough to think what you love because then you're back up here and you're cut off. You have to express, you have to voice what you love. In fact, if you put your hand on your heart when you voice what you love, you will actually feel your heart activated and opening. It's just like, it, it just, by the end of it, you're going to be laughing because joy is a natural expression and reflection of an open heart. And that is where you can really begin to connect with your guides. So this is sort of like putting gas in the car. This is like getting ready, jump starting, putting yourself in the consciousness to connect with the spirit realm because the spirit realm is there all the time. Our helpers are always with us. And I'll get to in just a moment, which are which and how they help and all the other exciting things that I talk about in my new book, Ask Your Guides, the revised edition. So name what you love. And if you want to type it in the chat room, please do. And as you type it, say, it. I love good coffee. I love lavender. I love, it doesn't matter, whatever you love, but it be, notice what's happening in your body as you do this, because that is where things get exciting, okay? Next, after this, what I want you to start doing is being aware that the more we are in the vibration of love, the more we should be, we'll, we'll be experiencing the frequency. I love it. Like Deborah, I love love. Yes. Now just notice how your body shifts and how your mind gets quiet. I love crystals. I love loving, living by the ocean. And when feel what happens when you shift, when you, when you begin to acknowledge what you love, how your energy elevates, how your sensitivity rises, how your availability to to energy expands, it's very exciting. And it's a very simple way to kind of enter the spirit connected world, the spirit connected frequency. You know, it's a sad thing, but most people's most common expression starts with the words, I hate. I hate the weather, I hate my butt, I hate my hair, I hate my job. and bam, we are just completely unplugged and all by ourselves. I love is our natural state. It makes us joyful, it reconnects us. And so we need to not only say it now, but have that be a regular conversation. When you express it, you open the throat chakra and that's where your, that's like the, the chimney of the heart, that's where the energy flows in and out is this throat and heart chakra. Now, the first guide that you're going to connect with and the first guide that showed up for you is and, and really walks your spirit into your body is your guardian angel. And angels and guides are very different. They are not the same. Angels generally, can I can say with pretty much confidence, have never really had a physical body and not had a human journey. Although we have what we call earth angels, which is very elevated spirits who help you. And we are all earth angels. We're all helping each other. But 
that from the angelic realm, these are the divine beings that your beloved creator has made available to you. And there are armies of angels. There are waves and tsunamis of angels. But the very first and most intimate is your guardian angel. And your guardian angel has a very particular guy and job. And this is the angel that is with you your entire life. The others may come and go. We invoke them and we change if we want to, but this guardian angel. So just, a, I am curious because I believe from my observations and working with people that we know we have a guardian angel, even though our intellect questions it, we feel it. So here's a good fun question. Where is your guardian angel standing right now? To the left, to the right, behind you, in front of you? Just answer that and see what comes right away. Where is your guardian? My guardian angel is right here. This is to my right. My guardian angel is with me. Where is yours? Behind and to the left. Hooray. Isn't, doesn't that make you smile? Just that's an awareness that we normally tune out just right up above my head. Yay. How exciting. And when we start to notice, the reason we're not noticing is because we're distracted. We're, we haven't been asked to notice, but when you begin to notice, there it is. I noticed. So isn't that exciting? So the next thing you can do, which makes it really fun, is you can ask your guardian angel to give you a name. And if you don't get a name, you can give your guardian angel a name. For example, I have a guardian angel. My, I have a spirit name, and I think it's also nice to name your spirit. So my name for my spirit is Bright Light. And the name of my guardian angel is Bright. Bright and Bright Light. We're a team, my guardian angel and I. So if you were to name your guardian angel or hear or sense the name, what would you sense? What comes to mind? Don't overthink it. Kind of take the first thing and just put it out there and, and express it. Just write it in the chat. Just have some fun with this. There you go. See, it pops in. We don't have to make this difficult. This is your best friend. So you don't have to put a question mark. Say, yes, Simon. Yes, Ariel. Yes, Light being, yes, that's your name. That's your name. And that's how I'm going to call you. And that creates the connection, the relationship. So it's so wonderful, so exciting to just have that, that, that uh, intimate connection. Now your guardian angel is connected and kind of walks you into your body and stays with you through your entire life's journey and walks you back to heaven when it's time for your spirit to exit. So you always, always have the guardian. The guardian's primary job is to stay with you and help you achieve your soul goals, your soul plan. And doesn't interfere unless you call for help and, or, or you start to drift into trouble and could somehow put yourself in a position where you won't fulfill your life plan. So the guardian angel does show up often when we are in a bit of trouble. So just ask, have I ever had an experience with my guardian angel? Did I ever feel just extraordinarily helped? And I don't know why, because if you think about it you're, and you're, you bring your awareness to this, you'll start noticing for sure. Yes, 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 yes. And th that awareness strengthens the relationship, that awareness really begins to help you. It's like when you learn a new song, you learn this signature, this frequency, this tone. When you feel this vibe, you know, that's my guardian angel. It's just like when you taste chocolate, that's chocolate. That's the smell of a rose. That's my guardian angel. And so I want you to just kind of get familiar with this frequency, with this feeling, with this name, and just start talking to your guardian angel. Personally, I have no problem talking to my guardian angel out loud. Some people like to talk, talk in, in, um, 
in their inner voice. But I tell you, the more you express it out loud, the more dynamic and the more connected you are. Okay, so your guardian angel is always with you, but then there are other guardian angels. There are other angels. Like when you are in an emergency, like you blow a tire on the highway in the middle of the night and all of a sudden someone shows up to help you. Those are the SOS angels, I call them. When you just like, help, help me. And they, I have written in the book, many stories of guardian uh, SOS angels showing up. And you may have had an SOS angel experience because they come running when you call out for help. And it's interesting thing about both angels and guides, both angels and guides. Um, that you have to ask for their help. You know, your guardians will kind of run a little protective energy to keep you on the path, but you have to, because you have free will, we all do, we have to invite our guardians in. We have to invite our helpers in so that, so because we're in charge. So this is another little tool. Once you become aware, I want you now to notice, I have a lot of help. But am I remembering or even aware to ask for it? So that's a huge piece. In fact, I was talking to a girlfriend whom I've known for 20 years or more. And she, came, she called me the other night feeling rather distressed and saying, I'm having some medical issue in my jaw. No, my dentist can't find it. The doctors can't find it. And I said, but did you ask your angels to help you find it? Did you? Yes. And you know, she said, I forgot. She was, I can't believe I've known you all this time. I've learned from you. I've worked with you. I've taken your workshops and I forgot. So we have to remember to ask our angels for help. We have SOS angels. I talk about this in the book, Ask Your Guides. So many different angels, but I want to pop up to the next thing. In addition to our guardian angels and our SOS angels, there are archangels. Now, the archangels are like huge, like the, the, the quarterback angels, the, the great angels who protect us all the time. I have a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, ritual that I've written in the book, Ask Your Guide. Just fantastic ritual called the Cube of Space, which puts the guardian angels around us in all six directions so that we're always in an, an, an energetic room of light that is protected by archangels. If we ask. Now we call in the Archangel Raphael, the guardian Archangel who helps us with our thoughts and our beliefs and our healing. Behind us is the Archangel Michael who is our protector. And a lot of people do know and work with the Archangel Michael. Some call him Mikael. I call him Mikael because that's how he was introduced to me. But Michael. Then to, our, to the east is Raphael, to the west is Gabriel, who helps us with our emotions. So he protects our emotions so that they don't get overwhelmed and they don't get swamped. And then in front of us, we have the Archangel Uriel, which helps us with our physical flow and physical material needs and abundance. So those are the four horizontal archangels. And then we have vertical ones. We have above us, we have Raguel. Below us, we have Shamuel. And this is the archangel of grounded compassion and hope and vision. And there's more. I know this is a lot, but again, not only is this all in the book, but in addition to that, what I put, what I was guided to do, and one of the things that's very different than my original version of Ask Your Guides, is I put uh, links to beautiful guided meditations, invocations, and mantras that are free. So you can actually call in the archangels. I have a morning meditation link where you invoke all six archangels and surround yourself east, west, front, back, above, below every single day. 
before you enter the world. And I have received incredible feedback on how this invocation and working with surrounding them, yourself with the archangels has transformed people's lives, just changed your life. But you can call them in and place them and ask them, protect my thoughts, protect my back, keep my emotions clear, open my, my uh, path to abundance, help me see the highest possibilities and stay connected to the earth and grounded in my body. So, you know, I, this, these are just a little bit of a brief kind of a, a, a overview of the angels. They come, they're happy, they help. One of the ways to invoke them is music. When you, the music is the realm of the art of angels. So one of the ways that you can really connect with angels is put on some beautiful, ideally maybe some celestial or classical music. And then when you do, you feel, you feel the guide, you feel the guidance, you feel the presence. You can ask them to protect you. You can ask them to walk with you, but here's something that um, your angels do that that is very important and really want you to pay attention to now they help you feel in love with yourself they help you so your angels send earth angels so whenever you're being down on yourself or you're criticizing yourself or you're having really a, a, a very low opinion of yourself, your angels will start, send some way and, and somehow they can even physically appear sometimes and just look like a human saying, you know, don't do that. Don't think that. Don't say that. Or just interrupt those very negative things. And so I really want you to know that if you ever experience someone spontaneously telling you to think well of yourself, to love yourself or interrupting any self attack. That's the presence of an angel. That person was sent by an angel. That's an indication that the angels are afoot. So that's just something that I think you're going to notice more and more and more. I mean, these angels are running all over the planet saying, love yourself. Please, unconditionally, those are angels. So I have a lot more in the, in the book, ask your guides for that and the transmissions to invoke the archangels and to connect with your spirit. So th those are two, there's six major transmissions and they're really nice, but I just feel like if you start noticing right now, if you notice that your when you hear any positive feedback, any interruption of negative thinking, any presence out of the blue where some you get some help, you get some kindness, that's an angel. Okay, now let's talk briefly. I just wanna to check to see, um, I just have a few more minutes, but I wanna now switch the channel a little bit and talk to you a little bit briefly about guides. Guides are different than angels. Angels are with you all the time. And angels can, in a, in a very big emergency, actually appear as human. And I've written some wonderful stories about that in the book, some really wonderful, but guides don't. Guides were, and the difference between angels and guides is angels were never human. Guides often, not exclusively, but many of our spirit guides were human at some point and had a human journey, had some human experiences and choose to come back as guides to help us really manifest success in our human journey, okay? So some of the guides that you may experience in the human journey are, I'm gonna have to move that a little bit in the way, um, like, your your relatives who've crossed over you may feel like maybe a grandfather grandmother's with you or or maybe a beloved departed something like that <clears throat> 
these guides do come back to help you, but not only family, not only, very much our family who's crossed over and is are in spirit now are with us. So can you imagine, here's something to do. And Maya Angelou, the beautiful, beautiful poet and, and, and gorgeous human Maya Angelou used to say, when you walk in a room, walk with a thousand spirits who love you. Can you imagine? the power that brings, walk with your spirits who love you, the guides who love you. So can you imagine, this is something I want you to take away with you tonight to never ever show up to anything again alone. You have that much love from the spirit realm. Now your guides come and help you. You have, a, you have basically a, a primary guide who kind of like your guardian angel travels with you throughout life. That's kind of your, your best friend in the spirit realm, your buddy. And then you also have guides who come and go. So they're like the volunteer corps. They come and go and help us depending on what we're focused on, what our needs are, and where we are in terms of our growth. So imagine the guides almost like teachers and teacher assistants as you go from classroom to classroom to classroom. As you evolve, different guides rotate in and out. Now I write about this and I wanna share this with you because right now we are in a huge growth spurt. We're really in a big rise up. And so we're getting a lot of new guides. And if you're feeling all of a sudden, maybe spontaneous inspiration, brand new ideas, new courage that you haven't really felt in the past, um, some, some, some energy in the body, some, some boost of some sort, that's your new guides. Isn't that exciting? And we generally have 33 guides working or available to us at all times, but they do rotate, evolve, and change. So when, when their service is done, they re rotate back to spirit. So they're helping you, helps them, and it's kind of a spiral upward. You can also ask for a change of guides or invoke new guides for particular things, depending on what you're working on. If you're, and I, I share this very much in, in much depth with the transmissions to invoke particular guides in the book. So you can invoke guides for maybe you're working on a work project or write, writing guides, for example. You can invoke the writing guides and they'll come. Maybe you're gonna do some public speaking. So you might invoke a guide that's maybe been used to being on stage and is very comfortable, can come and give you the energy. Maybe you're looking for a new house. So you invoke what I, what are we call the runners, the energy guides that, that run and connect. In the book, I talk about all the different layers of guides and, and divisions. We have joy guides that make us laugh and bring us uplift our hearts. We have nature spirits. We have animal spirits. We have healer guides, teacher guides, helper guides. We have light beings. I mean, it's amazing how much divine support we have and we have it for every single thing in life now your guides help you help yourself your guides give you guidance your guides give you direction bright ideas hunches ahas but you still have to agree you still have to take the guidance and you still have to enact on it but i'll tell you what honestly you want life to get really fun, really fast, ask your angels and guides to help you. And then start noticing the signs and paying attention. Ask your angels and guides and then start. You will end up every single day laughing, surprised, um, 
just delighted. You, you will be so surprised. You will be so blown away, honest to God. So I just really want you to know, and why I'm bringing all this to you now is we need our angels and guides. Nobody should be afraid. Nobody should feel alone. Nobody should be scared or trudging through life alone in the jungle, all by yourself and disconnected. No, no, no. We need the support and, and we need the joy because the biggest thing you're going to get in summoning and invoking and asking your angels and guides to come in is you then become part of this bright light from the world that, that beams out. So you elevate and so each of us who elevates our own experience becomes an uplifter for others and that's how it works so as you activate your connection to your angels and guides you open your heart you fall in love with your spirit you, you begin to have earth angels and 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 are and archangels protecting you and telling you you are wonderful and we're here to help you and it's easy and we want to just ask your life will change so fast one of the reasons i love my ask your guides book so much is because it's the one that gives you the instant results so that's what I wanted to share with you tonight. Again, the, if you've had my first book, which was wonderful, you'll love this new one even more because not only does it have brand new tools, wonderful stories of angels and guides, but these transmissions that actually instantly connect you to the spirit world. And you begin to start having an extraordinary experience for real. I promise you, you won't even go 72 hours without them experiencing a, you having a direct contact, joyful, surprising, game changing shift. And that's what I want everyone to experience. So use these tools, remember. Rub your hands, shake them out, feel the spirit, become sensitive to the subtle realm. Become sensitive to your beautiful spirit. Give yourself a hug and imagine along with that you're being hugged by a thousand spirit guides and angels who love you. And then wherever you go in life, go with this grace and confidence. So there you go, everybody. It's been a pleasure being with you and sharing these tips and tools and getting you connected to the spirit world and connected to your spirit and your heart and aware, like um, just tremendously aware of, of the energy. I just, and you know, I just really hope that you check out the book because it's so rich. It's like you should have this forever. It'll it'll be one of those. I mean, people have showed up with with their old copy of Ask Your Guides outlined and underlined and yellow markers and little tabs because he said this changed my life. And that's what I want to do: change your life quickly for the better. Okay, everybody, I love you all very much, and I feel so blessed from your, from your attention and your energy and your beautiful spirits, and, and I'm sending you all my love. Okay, everybody, come visit me on my website, SoniaShoquette.com, and stay connected to your spirit, to your heart, and to your angels and guides.